Good evening to you from London, Ontario, Canada, and welcome to Evening Prayer on this Monday, the 15th of February, Monday of the week in which Lent will begin in only two days on Ash Wednesday. We have concluded for a time our look at the Gospel of Mark. We will be starting today as we work into our Lenten journey with the Gospel of John. Today is the, the 15th of February. It's International Childhood Cancer Day, the 20th anniversary of this observance. Uh, their, their motto this year is, Better Survival is Achievable Through Our Hands. I remember as a younger person uh, working briefly as a social worker between, between university and attending seminary that uh, the, the, the diagnosis of childhood cancer was essentially a death sentence. I remember meeting with a family uh, in my caseload whose, uh, whose uh, young child had been diagnosed with leukemia and was given less than a year to live, a very common diagnosis at that time. Uh, and prognosis. Uh, now it's, a, it's very, very rare that a child would die of leukemia. And most other childhood cancers, uh, the research has been marvelous, the recovery rates much better. But still to this day, one out of five children with cancer will not survive. So it's a day to think about it. Uh, if you contribute to any of the cancer societies uh, to consider doing so, especially for the young children, to support those children's hospitals that are so involved in research and work in this area. In Ontario and several other provinces, today is Family Day. Uh, in uh, the neighboring province of Manitoba, it's Louis, Riel, Louis Riel Day. Uh, if you're on Prince Edward Island, it is Islanders Day. Uh, but uh, it is a day, at least here, uh, for a little bit of relaxation and time with family although they're suggesting you not gather with your family outside of your own household. In fact, they're strongly urging that you not do so. It is Hippo Day. Uh, we're in an interesting situation in, in which the hippopotamus is an endangered species within Africa, in spite of the fact that being the most dangerous and deadly land animal in Africa, uh, causing more deaths than any others, Hippopotamus comes from the Greek, essentially meaning water horse. For their amazingly huge size, they are surprisingly fast. They can run at 20 kilometers an hour, outrunning, therefore, many human beings. Uh, and at the same time, they're endangered in Africa. But uh, because of that, in spite of all other dangers, they are, uh, are protected. Uh, they're growing uh, very rapidly in Colombia. It seems that uh, when Pablo Escobar was drug lord of Medellin uh, in Colombia, that he imported uh, three female and one male hippopotamus and uh, also got giraffes and some other animals for his own private zoo uh, outside his mammoth estate, outside Medellin. Uh, and although uh, he is uh, no longer drug lord, the Medellin uh, drug cartel has been shot down, uh, shut down the, the hippopotamuses are still there in abundance and uh, they grow have grown now to somewhere between 80 and 100 of them they've become dangerous they're polluting the water uh, but uh, the uh, the government started uh, paying people to uh, to shoot them great public uproar people like them they bring in tourists uh, they sell stuffed hippopotamus animals and all kinds of things probably more than you wanted to know about hippos on this day. It is Singles Awareness Day. Uh, the classic is at a table for one. Uh, so much of our society is, is designed for pairs and families. And on family day to take note that singles also form families and uh, that as we make things available, plan for people, uh, it is important that we take into account the special needs of singles. And in this time of pandemic, uh, the single life can be extremely lonely for such people. This is also today the start of Random Acts of Kindness Week. Maybe sometime this week you can do something for somebody just because. That classic 
paying for the car or more cars behind you in the drive through uh, shoveling a neighbor's driveway just because, uh, sharing food just because, random acts of kindness. I think now we should be turning to our prayers. This is a Monday. I'm observing it as a memory Monday, and we will be using the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Today we will be using verses from Psalm 77. I will cry unto the Lord with my voice. Even unto God will I cry with my voice, and he shall hearken unto me. In the time of my trouble I sought the Lord in the night. My hand was stretched out without ceasing. My soul, uh, refused comfort. When I think upon God, I am in heaviness. When I meditate, my spirit fainteth. Thou holdest mine eye lives from closing. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I have considered the days of old and called to mind the years that are long past. I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. I will think also of all thy works, and meditate upon thy doings. Thy way, O God, is holy. Who is so great? A God is our God. Thou art the God that doest wonders, and didst declare thy power among the peoples. Thou didst mightily defend thy people, even the sons of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw thee, O God. The waters saw thee, and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poureth out water, the skies thundered, and thine arrows went abroad. The voice of thy thunder was in the whirlwind, the lightnings lit up the world, the earth was moved and shook with all. Thy way was in the sea, and thy paths in the great waters, and yet thy footsteps were not known. Thou lettest thy people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We are reading today from the third chapter of the Gospel of John. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anybody be born after grown, grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, 
that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send a Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is a judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light, and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. In the midst of this passage of conversation with Nicodemus, we have that famous passage, John 3.16, the passage that has been called the Little Gospel, or the Gospel in a Sentence. For God so loved this world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. A powerful, powerful message for Nicodemus to hear. Nicodemus, we're told, was a leader among the Jews, a Pharisee, uh, a member of the Sanhedrin Council, and he had come to Jesus by night. Had he slipped away? Was it a secret visit? Or did he think that by night he would have Jesus' undivided attention? But he'd come to Jesus, and he flatters Jesus. He said, we know that you must be from God because of the signs you are performing. These are good signs, and you must be a person of God. And Jesus starts talking about being born from above, or as other translations would have it, being born again. And Nicodemus, being a logical man, a well-educated man, can make no sense of it. He said, well, how is it possible for me, grown up, a man, to climb back into my mother's womb and be born again. And Jesus says, you're not understanding. He's talking about being born, born of water and the Spirit. Many scholars have said that this refers to our baptism, being born of the water of baptism. Others have suggested that it means being born in human terms, uh, encased in the, uh, in the waters of the, of the womb, uh, the amniotic fluid, as it is called, being born from that. Uh, but uh, to whichever it is, Jesus then talks about being born of the Spirit. Uh, and certainly, uh, we see in our baptism, the Spirit is also there. Uh, the anointing with oil is a sign of the receiving of the Spirit. Uh, we talk about the light of Christ. We give a lighted candle to the newly baptized usually asking for children for their sponsor to hold it. We don't want to burn anybody. And I can see a small child, ooh, fire. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, and we say, uh, let your light so shine before others that they see may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And Jesus talks about light and darkness in this passage. And those who are children of the light will do deeds of the light. But those who are in the darkness will do evil things. A wonderful conversation between Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews, who has come to learn more about Jesus, maybe part of an investigating group. We can't be sure of that. But he seems to have come in earnestness. He, he has come showing respect of Jesus, but he does not understand all that Jesus is about. He sees him as just one more gifted rabbi. A rabbi, maybe he wants to bring on side. A rabbi, he wants on his side before he becomes a problematic rabbi. Jesus, though, speaks of being the one who brings about our salvation. More, I think, than Nicodemus was ready to hear and more than he could understand. Jesus said, you claim to be a teacher of the Jews, and yet you do not understand these things. It implies that 
Nicodemus is not as smart as he thinks he is. So, we have in the midst of this conversation, and the book of John is a book of conversations, of signs, of discourse, of extended discourse, in fact. It's a, it's a book with the I am statements of Jesus. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. And so it goes. We'll be working our way during this Lenten season through the, uh, the first 12 chapters of the book of John. An amazing amount of material here. Now, John is probably, most probably, in fact, the last of the Gospels to be written. We've just come from Mark, the first of the Gospels to be written. Uh, some were dating Mark uh, late in the first century or even into the second century. Now, as we're looking more closely at it and other evidence comes to mind, we're saying Mark could have been written in 70 uh, AD or even sooner. Uh, that John, many had originally thought, might be the work of someone writing in John's name. The scholars are beginning to say, no, this is the work of John, the son of Zebedee, the fisherman, uh, one of the 12. Uh, either way, it's a very important work. It tells us so much about Jesus. Some of my favorite New, New Testament passages come from the book of John. And I'm excited to help guide you uh, over these weeks of Lent through these marvelous readings. As carefully, slowly, we'll work our way 12 chapters of this great book. Well, we ought to look back in history because our history tells us who we are, where we have come from, the good things and the bad things that have happened before us. And it was in 399, before the Common Era, that the philosopher Socrates was sentenced to death by the city of Athens for corrupting the minds of the youth and of the city and for impiety. In 1867, Johann Strauss's beautiful waltz, The Blue Danube, premiered in Vienna. In 1902, the Berlin U-Bahn, the Underground Railway, opened. Traveling in a German-speaking city, you'll know you're near the underground, the subway as we would call it here, the metro as it's known in, uh, in Montreal and some other places, because of a large U sign up above. Uh, in Berlin, Vienna, uh, Munich, you see that U for Unterbond, the underground bond. Bond is simply a word for road. And we'll be speaking about subways a little later. But in 1903, the first teddy bear was introduced in North America, named after President Teddy Roosevelt. When our daughter was little, we got her a bright yellow, yellow terry cloth covered uh, teddy bear, so nice and smooth and cuddly, and the name on the package was Terry Teddy. Oh, I remember Terry Teddy well. In 1936, Adolf Hitler announced the construction of the Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, Volkswagen, they said, meant people's car, but interestingly, that is not the name that Hitler chose for it. He called it the Kraft der Freudewagen, which means the strength through joy car. You can see why Volkswagen rolled off the tongue more smoothly than Krafters Freiderwagen, although in German it was called the, the K de F Wagen. Uh, but uh, anyhow, uh, it, uh, people were given savings books and could save up their money to buy them. Of course, the war intervened before they were available to the general population. The people had diligently saved. After the war, uh, the Volkswagen facility in Wolfsburg, Germany, was rehabilitated. A man named Heinz Nordhoff was put in charge of it, and uh, they began producing it, and people showed up with their stamp books and said, I have saved up and I have a car coming to me. But they said, well, that was in a previous regime, an era. Well, that was a court case, and their, their savings books were worth a significant amount toward the purchase of the Strength Through Joy car, the Krafters Freudewagen. I like saying that. Uh, 1936, same year, uh, Sonja Henny of Norway became the most successful Olympic figure skater of all time by winning her third consecutive gold medal at the Garmisch-Partenkirchen 
Winter Games. In 1941, I said we'd be speaking of subways again. Duke Ellington first recorded Take the A Train. Uh, the A Train is that subway line running from the north end of Manhattan at 27th Street all the way down Manhattan, pretty much along 8th Avenue, uh, and then over into Queens and as far as Far Rockaway Beach. We uh, had the, uh, the privilege and the pleasure of seeing Duke Ellington in concert at the uh, amphitheater in Snyder Park in Springfield, Ohio, when I was a student in seminary in the early 1970s. He put on an amazing concert. In 1952, on this date, King George VI was laid to rest in St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle in England. Of course, George VI was the father of our present Queen, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. In 1965, the red maple leaf flag was proclaimed the official flag of Canada. There was much dis discussion about that. Some were unhappy about it, but I think it's been pretty well accepted now. It's a beautiful flag. The, uh, the flag for backpackers to, to sew upon their pack so that people will know they're Canadians and for the rest of us to put in little lapel pins. In 1982, the Ocean Ranger drilling platform was lost off the coast of Newfoundland with 84 deaths. In 2001, the first draft of the human genome was published in the journal Nature. Uh, when I was in school, we had not even heard of such a thing as a genome. And in 2005, the YouTube internet site was inaugurated. Uh, and here I am giving evening prayer on YouTube every night. Uh, only, only 16 years we've had it with us, and yet it seems so much a regular part of our life now. And of course, our, our Sunday services are live streamed on YouTube and then available later for watching if you wish. So that's enough of what's happened. Let us return to our prayers. Turn my book right side up and There we are. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. And now, in the language of our choosing, we offer that prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. And the collect for this uh, immediate past Sunday before the start of Lent. O God, who has taught us that all our doings without charity are nothing worth. Send thy Holy Spirit, and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of charity, the very bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whosoever liveth is counted dead before thee. Grant this for thine only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, 
that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we pause for a moment of silence in which you might offer up your prayers and petitions. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, this promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those you love and those that you would pray for, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.